Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from the ShrinkingPastor.com. Together, the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. I didn't point that time. It, it throws you off when I actually say the same thing, right? It does, uh, just a little bit. Hey guys. I've been switching it up lately. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I tell you what, it's going to take a while to get used to saying 2015. It always does. I know. It always takes a while to get used to saying 2015. This will be the first be time. The first time, but it's going to take a while. You know it. <laughs> so we still have the uh, the tobacco advent tree up behind us, but the next time you're with us, it'll be gone. Because, as he discussed, one of his favorite traditions is celebrating Christmas through the end All of the, way. the year. All the way through the end of the year. So glad that you're here with us today. Um, Smoking today. Tom Fancy. From uh, the the good folks at Sutliff Tobacco, I don't know Halberg Halberg Green Label from Denmark. Mm. Uh, Sutliff has been a sponsor. Of I, I would say that they're like a sponsor. Yeah. They've been very good to us, they have. sending us a lot of tobacco they'd like us to try, and when we like it, they'd like us to mention it, and um, you know. But we, you watch it live. <laughs> you watch it live. So when we don't like it, we'll tell you. When we do tell you. Yeah, so check this out. It's a little little box. So this this is from them, and this is super, super, I mean. A couple people that bring this. It looks super fancy anyway. I don't know anything about it, but it's in a box within a box, and then has some. Well, see if that says anything about it. It's, uh, it's aromatic. I can tell you that. Halberg. Sorry to all those people who know what this is and are thinking, what a bunch of buffoons that they don't even know what this is. No. Wow. That is... Here's what it says. No, no effort has been spared when the tobacco grades were selected. From tobacco fields of three continents, the absolute best bright Virginia and ripe burly leaves were harvested. A part of the tobacco blend is pressed into cakes... Hereafter, cut into small pieces and hand blended with the exclusive ribbon cut and cross cut Virginias. I am going to cramp. This. I'm oh. going to step back. Look at that. That is fascinating. Huh. This is this is very similar to our funky fruit loopy German tobacco. Look at all the different cuts and different colors. cuts that are in here. A part of the tobacco blend is pressed into cakes, hereafter cut into small pieces and hand blended with the exclusive ribbon cut and cross cut Virginians. The nose is greeted by a scent of gentle berries mixed with a hint of exotic fruits. When smoked, the perfect balance between natural tobaccos, subtle flavor notes, and cross cut Virginia flakes create a slow burn in your pipe and an exquisite aromatic smoking pleasure. I'm all for all those things. Yeah. Wow, that smells absolutely wonderful i like as we've mentioned from the fruit loopy german <clears throat> tobacco i like a fruity tobacco hmm wow you're not kidding uh, no i'm not kidding Let's see how it goes light them if you have them nose again I'm doing something wrong these days guys. Say, have, you, have you smoked before <laughs> it's new mm, 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 mm. all right so as we enjoy this um boy and i decided we wanted to talk about a couple things with you um Any of you who've watched my channel, or have even watched this channel, know that I received a gift last Christmas that I mentioned several days ago as being the best Christmas gift I received last year. And that is, from my son-in-law, I received a pocket monkey. We're just getting right into it, huh? Yes, we are. All right. The pocket monkey is a tool that fits into your wallet, and it's a multi-tool. And I use this thing like 
crazy. It's all the time coming out of my wallet for something. You can measure with it. You can open bottles with it. It's a wrench, although I've never used it as a wrench yet. Haven't had the need. But it's a bunch of different screwdrivers, and I've used it as several screwdrivers. And in one case, it uh, saved our bacon because I had to get into a crate with this. It's the only screwdriver I had. Um, it can be used for a lot of different things. I mentioned it got taken away from me by TSA, even though it is a TSA... Well, no, it is compliant with TSA rules. And the folks at TSA have the right to enforce the rules as they see fit. Um, and uh, as long as it's not sharp, like, you know, cut your skin kind of sharp, it's supposed to be compliant. does so many different things, and uh, I love it. A couple weeks ago, I won a gold one, one of ten gold pocket monkeys that uh, the folks at Zutility have, um, they had a little contest. They're trying to get up to a hundred uses for this product. They had certified about 50 of them and they were looking for people to uh, tell us how you use your pocket monkey in a way that we don't already know. And uh, I use this again at a trade show to pry the, the staples out of a uh, poster tube. And uh, it worked like a champ and it was the only tool I happened to have on me because I came directly from the airport and didn't have my pocket knife out of my luggage yet. So that is a pocket monkey. I highly recommend it. Boy. <laughs> That's a segue. Uh, Two-wheeled gyroscopic scooter? <laughs> yes. Remember when those things were just called It? Yes, and I And everyone do. was crazy about it. It's going to be huge. Please. Have you seen how segues are used? Mm. Cops in New York that... And tours, Segway tours. Yeah. Have you ever ridden on one? No. I have. Have you? I have. You enjoy I have. it? Yeah. It was, I mean, it was cool. It's a little terrifying, leaning way forward yeah. to to move. But, yeah, it was, it was cool um, until I had to go up steps. And then it just was totally thwarted. Did you hear about the guy that uh, had the off-road version and drove it off a cliff accidentally? Mm. Yeah, wasn't that one of the inventors? It was one of the inventors, yeah. yeah. I did. Um, it lived up to its off-road capabilities, though. It will indeed drive you off of the road <laughs> and off of cliffs, apparently, if you're not careful. So, uh, I, I want to have a throwdown. Hmm. Because I know the Pocket Monkey isn't the only game tool <laughs> out there. And so I went on to the internet... Because I have seen pocket tools uh, in the past, credit card size tools. And so I purchased one off Amazon. And some of you saw a picture. I am going to try to remember to put it right here. There it is. Oh, that. I remember yeah, that. yeah. Um, I posted this on Instagram a couple weeks ago. It came in. Um, and, and that, I, that would, I mean, that one's, what's the word? Ubiqu cheap? Ubiquitous? Yeah. It's everywhere. That's a generic one. I've uh, you're, you're, You've uh, seen it. Your you're, uh, cousin, Beanie had several of those right yeah same, same exact style they're cheap you know chinese you can get them on amazon for dirt cheap i bought three for four dollars with prime shipping okay hmm. they came in i was really excited because i'm like all right this is gonna get up close with that by the way this you should is really going, see it up close well that's that's what the picture is for this hmm. is going to take out the the pocket monkey and so uh take another look at the picture now let me show you um what came in it's advertised as credit card size in China, I don't know if you know this, the credit cards are very small. They have small hands. <laughs> That's why. So, <laughs> so here, here is the credit card size tool. Yeah, is, you're a credit card size tool. <laughs> what so a disappointment. This, this definitely would not be TSA approved. It has a blade. It has a sharp point. It has a saw. Um, it has this compassy thing for who knows what purpose. Um, it, it can, it can maybe twist one or two nuts, but, uh, it's, it's a bit of a loser, um, especially at this size. Uh, Here, so I up. think, I think it probably could open a bottle. For, for scale, mine's truly credit card size. Silly. You just have a credit card for scale. Did, did you get the, no. <laughs> you don't have to. Let me hold my Bitcoin Not up the, to not it. the number <laughs> side. 
Um, all right. Or business card or something. All right. So uh, this was a bit of a disappointment, but we really should have a test or something to, to use this. But um, the other pocket tool that I know is on the market is one that I, I don't know if it's more popular than the Pocket Monkey, but I have seen it more. Um, and it, in part because it's an ad seen on TV yeah. product um, where the Pocket Monkey is not. This one, I don't care for the design, but I thought I would get it anyway. Um, this is the Wallet Ninja. Now take a look at that. Uh, it has pretty much the same skill set as the Pocket Monkey. It's just uh, arranged differently. And this says, um, 18 tools in one, world's first 100% flat multi-tool fits in your wallet. Wallet Ninja. First 100% flat? Is this one of those? Eyeglass screwdriver. Lifetime guarantee to never rust, bend, or dull. So it's that's stainless a, steel, that's pretty, so it's not going to rust. Pretty high claim. 1.5 millimeters of four times heat-treated steel. Huh. Use it every day. What if I don't? Fits in your wallet. The power of 18 reliable, functional, everyday tools and the size of a credit card. TSA approved. Approved for carry-on during flight. Now, we'll, we'll look at that. Open what? it with this. All right. <laughs> Uh, oh, for more products or to contact us, log on to www.toolsforninjas.com. They need a .ninja uh, address, I think. Um, so it has some of the same things. We're going to look at those. Like, But again, some of the things it claims are kind of stupid. Like six hex nuts and bolts. Okay, that's fine. Four screwdrivers. Phillips, flathead, and eyeglass screwdrivers. But... It's like saying, oh, look, there's a corner on this thing. This is totally a screwdriver, guys. <laughs> it's totally for screws. Hey, um, and it's cordless. This has a bottle, can, letter opener, and box cutter, inch and centimeter ruler, cell Hold phone on. stand. Box cutter? That's what it says. And it, it, then it's not TSA approved. Uh, Unless they're just talking no, a no, corner no, that no, you're no, no, jamming no, no. in through your tape. Yes. It's a, it's a box opener, mm. is what it says on here. It's a sharp corner. Yeah. And then uh, a peeler. That's right. They're a claiming, peeler? They're claiming a peeler. So we'll, we'll take a look that at that peeler. sounds familiar. Let me, let me see if I can get this in with this multi-tool. Oh, whoa! Careful. That just... <laughs> Careful. Getting the job done, tiny little credit card Chinese <laughs> tiny hands people. Here we go. Oh, yeah. I got this corner here for you. Let's see what we can do with that. Can we get the corner into the... Now, what I will tell you is, I don't think my pocket monkey could open that package. I don't think it can. I mean, maybe it can with one of the corners. Oh, what? I think this could be a peeler, too. Wow, job. Uh -huh. Look, this sucker, tiny little... Three for four dollars is getting into this little uh, <laughs> safe packaging. Are you impressed yet? How you like me now, pocket monkey? <laughs> What's that? You don't? That's right, you don't. Can I give you my knife? Would you no. just open it with my knife? Uh, I could, but you issued the challenge. The challenge has been issued. It shall not be <laughs> revoked. Careful. I'm all right. <laughs> well, now you're using your might. <laughs> Not your mighty little pocket tool. I see. I see how it's going to be. Fine. Although, couldn't the argument be made that I'm using my might anyway with my tool? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we come, pocket ninja. You just call me the... So, you know, those of you that are nerdy on the internet, you know that, that there's a thing where, pi where pirates and ninjas uh, um, fight each other. They hate each other. They're mortal enemies. I think that I would be interested in knowing how the pocket pirate would sell. But, but, <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, I, need, I need that. I need that. I'm, I'm afraid to ask. Now, I don't know why they did this. Look at this. This is not attached to anything, but it has a zip tie on here. To keep me from getting into oh. the whole thing. 
That's to keep it from slipping around inside the case. That's all it was. All right, I want to show you something. But now I, I have to scratch the, my the screwdriver corner, the Phillips screwdriver corner of my pocket monkey. Yeah. I'm curious. No, well now you're just using your force. My might. Your might. Look at that. Yeah. All right. So the corner corner of this thing could do that. Yeah, but could the pocket ninja? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't played with it yet. This thing. So just on. through the package, the one thing that we are unimpressed by. You'll notice that the wrench on the Pocket Monkey is right there, stamped into the face of it. And to change things up, the uh, Pocket Ninja has put those wrenches around the exterior of this letter opener. This is definitely a blade. You know, I don't know how the TSA would feel about this, but watch. Once you get that in there, the letter opener portion, you can... Um, You just tear cut. in the plastic, though, right? No, no, no. I, that's cutting. That's a blade, is what that is. That, no, the inside here, that definitely cut that open. Which you oh, probably yeah, that is sharp. Uh, which you probably could do with the inside of your letter My opener. My gosh, part. that is sharp. Yeah, you could probably do that with the inside part of your pocket monkey. I don't know. I don't think so. That that's a lot sharper. I mean, it's contained here, so it, you couldn't do damage with that. Maybe if you stab somebody with it. All right, look, Actually, look, look. Yeah, you can do that with Pocket Monkey. Yeah. The Pocket Monkey's sharp enough to rip through plastic, too. All right, match. All right, so the thing that we didn't care for is the hex slots here. I just imagine that this would just rip right through your wallet. Pulling it in. Because those are all just a bunch of exposed little teeth, ends on there, right? Teeth, yeah. Um, so well, you could comb your hair with this. I can't do that with the pocket that's monkey. That's true. So what is the? Well, let's compare. Let's get rid of the zip tie. Yeah, let's compare what the pocket monkey has. I mean, you know, the same argument could be made for the monkey because the tail kind of pokes out here. So we've got bottle openers, which are pretty similar, pretty standard. Um, this has a can opener. Does this have a can opener? Mm, I think that this corner right here is a can opener. Uh, that's not sharp, though. That's the earbud, isn't it? Can be used for that. This, this legitimately, I think, could be used as a can opener. Okay. There's a picture. All right. Can. So if open. you're going around opening like beans, this might be a better option for you. For you. Green beans. <laughs> It has almost an identical cell phone credit card stand. When I saw that, I thought that was a ripoff. I thought so because you put your credit card in there on the on the pocket monkey, and you can set your phone on it. But we don't know who ripped off whom. I know they say they were the first. I know the Walt Ninja. What about the uh, the ruler on yours? Is it plainly mm, marked? Yeah. This one is this one is surprisingly well marked. We got inches on this side. And centimeters over here. Yeah, and millimeters, but I think this is shorter than what yours is. Yeah. Yeah, but this is one inch. This is two inches. No, no, this isn't one inch, boy. Marked? Marked on there is one inch. Hold it up. Yeah, it's an inch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... The real, the real test. This claims to have a peeler, and what I have always harassed him about is the fact that oh, you can peel oranges with your pocket monkey, <laughs> burr, burr, burr. and so I have no idea how this peeler is going to work or how it should be used. How would you use that? Which one's the peeler? This. Would you use it? You're a ninja, man. Oh, you got oranges? Uh, we we have oranges. All right. Should I wait till you figure it out, or should I just go to town? Um, you probably should wait. All right. Yes, I have said that the thing I've used my pocket monkey for more than any other function has been peeling oranges. Oh, look at that. Look at how it's just it's just destroying. Hold it sideways. Look at how it's just oh, terrible. Look at this. I got a nice, clean cut there. Well, you know, 
I mean, all this. all that really is is a nubbin, right? No, it's it's a hook, and the hook is uh, is sharpened. Yeah, okay, but look, if I use just the if I use just the screwdriver nub here, I get a it's similar. Ter- it's tearing no, no, it no, up. No, it is not. Look at that cut. That cut right okay. there. I've just made one, two, three, four, five, six cuts in my orange. Yeah, and it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. That one that is actually not. That is not a bad cut. Well, we also need to see then. We'll peel them and see if any damage has been done to the flesh. Well, I'm interested. Yeah, that that part, the way it, it appears to be advertised, is not great. That is that's that's poor. All right, I want you to notice, boy. There were three cuts right there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely no damage done okay. to the flesh. There's no no uh, wound. Leaking juices at all. I didn't really cut mine. Like <laughs> I know you didn't. No, I mean I didn't. I wasn't really planning to open it and peel it. I was just I mean, look at that. No dripping whatsoever. Perfectly peeled orange. Yeah, mine. Advantage, pocket monkey. Mine definitely ripped into the... Oh, yeah, it's... Depending on how you use it. And how many oranges have you peeled with your pocket tool? I have some practice. Yes. <laughs> That's right, you do. All right, now we're going to switch... We're going to switch tools and see which one works better. <laughs> Pocket monkey. <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> All right, so. But the proof is in the pudding here. So, Wallet Ninja, $10 at mm. um, Office my, Depot. My orange tastes better, too. Yeah, you actually were able to get into your orange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Say it louder. What I said was, if you need to open a can with a Pocket Monkey, you're screwed. So get the wallet ninja. <laughs> Pocket monkey's pretty good, but let's see what my saw can do. <laughs> oh yeah, that is the stuff. It is just ripping that right away. Ah, why did I put that in my mouth? It's back in my wallet. My monkey goes to survive yet another trip. I hope. But is your pocket monkey? <laughs> Rust proof. Yeah, stainless steel. But does it have a rust guarantee? <laughs> you know. You know, I had my pocket monkey taken away by TSA, and the good folks at Zootility gave me another one. The zoo, good folks at Zootility gave me a golden pocket monkey because of my my additional use of uh, pulling staples with it, which is legit. I mean, it really worked. I'm not going to lie. The... Dollar twenty five. <laughs> the Chinese <laughs> work pretty well for peeling, peeling the orange. Um, that's cool. So if that's the standard of excellence, then go with the little Chinese one. That's what I'm saying. What else did you get? You know, uh, just Amazon I'm a nerd. You say that, but no, uh, uh-uh. uh, nope. Uh, this is so uh, a while back around Halloween. I showed off the uh, my new drone, my, my new toy. And to be honest, I haven't had very many opportunities to fly that. So I still don't know how well it flies. But I did get, in the meantime, another little... It's not a drone because a drone is autonomous. But um, this is a quadcopter. This is the Proto-X. It is just a motherboard with some fans on it. Um, this... You can't even see it. It's so tiny. This is... One of the world's smallest Here. for scale. <laughs> yeah, this is a charge card size. <laughs> One of the world's smallest um, quadcopters. I think it was thirty dollars on Amazon. Here, I'll hold it. Launch it, it. Well, I gotta level it out. It so it's got LEDs, blue for the front, red for the rear, which is awesome. Um, it came with this small controller, but the controller from my other. Uh, quadcopter will also work on this one. But this, I've actually taken to my school. 
um, while I was there and was flying it around the classroom. Um, right. Yeah, I got, got a little bit more practice with this than the other one. So hopefully it is trimmed. <laughs> wow. So. That's cute. This sucker is awesome. It's a uh, uh, 30 minute-ish charge time. Will last for about six minutes of flight. Um, but you can fly it indoors. I'm still not good enough yet to really mess with turning the direction. So mostly I try to keep it facing forward and then strafe forward, backwards, left, and right. Um, but you can fly it at nighttime. And what's also what's also great about these is it uses that same 2.4 gigahertz channel uh, radio frequency. So I can use my bigger uh, controller with it. And unlike a lot of a lot of the remote controlled things in the past, they had a hard time because you could um, it was just one wave per. Um, what am I trying to say? One channel. One channel for all of the devices. So, like, a lot of the... If you get some of the... Like, the Brookstone um, helicopters, it has an A, B, C, because those are the only so options you, you and have. your friends it's want use a different to fly channel. together. That's right. Yeah. With these, you turn it on, you turn your, your set on, and it connects with it, and you can all be flying. So, you can be flying with a bunch of these. So, they're great for your kids. I know Christmas just passed, but... Um, they're great for you. They're great for the shop. They're great for just every place. The wind will affect these a bit more than the other one. It's not terribly powerful, but you can do all sorts of things. You can set up PVC pipe, um, obstacle courses and stuff when you get good. Fun. So I got this one because the quadcopters, when you don't know what you're doing, it's re they're very sensitive to, L to um, power. So if you power it just a little bit, it takes off towards the ceiling. It's kind of all all up or all down. You know, if you low, drop it yeah. too low, it just drops. And so I got this to get a better feeler on how to fly my bigger model um, and have found that I just love this. It is great. That's cool. Well, that kind of takes some of the sting off the, the pathetic pocket uh, ninja. Wallet ninja. Huh. I'm glad you like this. You know, in my life, this is probably the first orange that I have opened in quite some time. So I'm not broken up about the fact that my Wallet Ninja, which can cut things and open boxes faster and can open cans, can't open an orange. Report back. Let me know how many cans you open in real life with that. So many. Green beans. So many. <laughs> Look, if, if, you, if you want to prepare to work at a zoo, Pocket Monkey's great. Or feeding the monkeys their oranges. If you want to prepare for the zombie freaking apocalypse, you need to open some cans. I know fruit, like oranges, are basically nature's cans. <laughs> but yes, they are. They won't sustain you long. Oh, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Um, you know, we were talking about looking back over this last year. We smoked about 75 tobaccos. Um, as Boy mentioned, uh, we're very, very thankful for people who've shared those tobaccos, people who steered us to, to tobaccos that we've purchased, and uh, to Sutliff for sending us tobaccos. A couple other shops have sent us some tobaccos, yeah. too. And, uh, and so many of you, I mean, you guys provided all of the tobaccos that we got to enjoy during Tobacco Advent, and the 20 or so tobaccos that we'll be enjoying over the next weeks to come, because you just sent us so much, and... You know, we were talking about how how we wouldn't have the opportunity to experience half as much as we have gotten to in yep. thanks to, to all of you. Yep. So neither of us have pad or tad. I smoke corn cob pipes pretty much exclusively, so I don't have uh, pipe acquisition disorder. And um, you know, I, I like Lane One Q, so it's sort of my default tobacco. Yeah. But because people have shared other tobaccos, it's really opened uh, opened my life up into some new experiences in the uh, world of pipe smoking. So, thank you guys. All right, to wrap it up. We will see you in the new year with uh, more weekly episodes of Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Right. Thanks for joining us and being a part of all this. Go buy a wallet, Ninja. You know you want to. Bye. Bye.